Once again, I'd like to welcome you to the True Gospel Program. My name is Bobby Carmen. I appreciate this opportunity to come into your home by the way of the radio, uh, by the way of your automobile. All you have to do is turn this on, 93.5 WMMG, and this streams live around the world on the internet. So uh, tell your people, tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, they can listen to this radio broadcast live on Sunday mornings. And uh, we're also available on the Facebook and the YouTube. Uh, these evidently are in video form on those. And if you'll type in Sister Paula's name, Paula McKenzie, and go to the Facebook, you'll come to her website and uh, you can watch hours of video. If you type in my name uh, on the YouTube, Bobby Carmen, you'll go to those same videos, and she has posted it all on there, the same ones. And she has several other little sites that it's been downloaded on. But we're working together to try to get the grace gospel of the Apostle Paul known and get people familiar with that teaching because that is what you will give account for in the day of judgment. There's nothing else that you will be judged by. Your works and deeds of the flesh, Christ Jesus has done, died on the cross for those carnality, those fleshly disobediences and shortcomings and faults and failures. But what he did do is put into effect through the Apostle Paul a grace gospel. That grace gospel replaced, it nullified uh, the law of Moses and it took it out of our way being Gentiles and us being examined by the law, us having to answer to the Jewish law uh, at that time and we were measured and compared as Gentiles to the law and that was not what God wanted. The Lord wanted the Gentile people to never ever be brought into bondage of the law and we understand that. We know it. I can prove it to you that the law was never meant for the Gentile people. Amen. And for approximately 1,570 years, when the law went into effect through Moses, uh, the law brought them uh, the things that God wanted, the good things. The law was a perfect uh, example of whom God is. But understand this, no man, not Moses himself, not the first priest who was Aaron, Moses' brother, not any of the twelve tribes of Israel, was there any man, woman, in those uh, which would be Israel, the nation of Israel, whom the law pertained to, there was none righteous. There was none worthy of God's salvation, God's free gift, and there was none of them through the law that could justify themselves enough that God would have to save them. Amen. The law brought the knowledge of sin, and sin, when it is finished, brought forth the curse which was death. Adam broke one law, and that was to not touch or taste the one law that God gave him of every tree you can eat of, but of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat of it, and when you do, you'll surely die. And Adam got deceived, and Adam got misled, and he thought that he could eat because it was good, and he did, and Adam died. Can't you see that? That is all a leading up to. The whole Old Testament 
If you were spiritual minded, you could read it and discern it and apply it to God through the Holy Ghost in our dispensation of time and you would see parables. You would see instances back there of the flesh. You would see comparisons of the flesh even unto now where it is all spiritual. It was all a leading up to. It was all something that God intended and purposed to do first in the flesh, first in the natural, and then he would transfer this, that whole plan, all of those pinnacles, all of those things of wisdom and knowledge through the things of the flesh was hidden, and they were hid, and now that Christ has come, and now that the Apostle Paul has been put into effect uh, in the day that he became the Apostle to the Gentiles called by the Ascended Lord, not the Natural Lord. Listen, the Twelve Apostles were called by the Natural Jesus, the Fleshly Jesus, the one that was born of a woman, made under the law, that put on the flesh, so that he could partake and taste of the things of the flesh. And Christ was in the flesh. He suffered things and he went through things all for a purpose, all to partake and say, I've been there and done that. You see, but the law came into effect through Moses 1500 and some years before Christ. When Christ comes, listen to Paul's revelations. Peter doesn't say these things. None of the other 11 apostles say these things because Jesus was in the flesh. Jesus was under the law. Jesus was born of the tribe of Judah. And he himself finds himself under all of what Moses declares beginning from the priesthood, through the mouth of the priest, through the mouth of the prophets, and through the what had been called by the God, by the Lord, in the Old Testament, of chosen men, holy men, to perform, to write 39 books. Moses wrote five of them. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's where we have... Uh, all of the law that's pertaining to Israel, God's chosen people. You know who that would be? The seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac, the seed of Jacob, through 12 sons. And then Moses is born of the tribe of Levi. And Moses has this task to deliver out from bondage, these men and women who are Jews, who are the seed and the offspring through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he has the task of giving them the law. And he succeeds. He does it in a perfect form. He does it in the way that God instructs. And since the law, there have been other men that arose. And David was one of them, a king of Israel. And there was Solomon, the king of Israel. There was Saul, the king of Israel. And Israel wanted a king, so God gave them a king. He allowed them to participate under the, these three kings at certain periods of time frame. And he did this to show them that even through kings that the nation of Israel could not be led into a place of perfectness where God would accept them for the works and the deeds of the law that they did. Amen. They were evil. These people, even though they were called the children of God, the children of Israel, God's chosen people, they, in their 
daily routines, in their yearly routines, and their annual festivals and stuff, through the law, they still came up short by worshiping idols, graven images, and partaking into the things of the world that the Gentile, heathen, dogs, and beasts of the field did. Amen. Your Old Testament is full of it. Read it if you don't believe me. I would suggest, this is my suggestion, this is what I would favor for you to do and respect for yourself to do. Read Paul's 14 books first. Read at least one of the Gospels first before you go venturing back into the Old Testament. Amen. The Old Testament is a series of not just Ten Commandments. Where do you think you get off just keeping Ten Commandments? There's 28 laws that pertain to that one commandment, the Sabbath day. And every one of you break about every one of them every Sabbath day. If you was under it, you are going to go to hell. Amen. You understand me? If you apply the law to your own family, man of the house, if you are a Christian and you apply the law, Ten Commandments, to yourself and your family, you're all going to go to hell. Amen. You can't make it. Even by that one law, the Sabbath, because there's 28 laws pertaining to that Sabbath, and none of you keep it. You as Gentiles have been brought under the misconception that you have to keep Sunday as the Sabbath. Lord, I get condemned all the time. People shake their head and stomp their foot at me because they see me doing something I shouldn't be doing in their eyes. Oh, because I don't agree with their religion. Because I'm not a Baptist or a Methodist or a Catholic, they disagree with me because I'm out there mowing my yard if it's a pretty Sunday and the yard's dry and I've got time to mow it. They, they just disagree with me. And I go out and do other things on what they think is the Sabbath, which is Sunday. And they think as I, being a preacher, am nothing but a hypocrite because of the things that I do on Sunday. They rule me and judge me and even access me. They have already got me figured up, tallied up, totaled up, and I'm a sinner and a transgressor of the Sabbath day law because I don't go to their church and because even though if I did, they do things that the Sabbath laws didn't allow. They'll go out and eat after church on Sunday. That wouldn't have been allowed. You couldn't go out and buy your dinner. You couldn't even go home and fix your dinner. Do you, you understand me? You couldn't kindle a fire on the Sabbath day. You couldn't cook on the Sabbath day. You couldn't go out and travel more than three quarters of a mile on the Sabbath day. Some of you get in your automobiles and drive 40 miles to a church because all of those in your community, you're known and they're known to you and you don't really have want any association to them as far as a religion. So you got to go out in the areas where you're not known so well and where the people you're there with are not known by you so well. Friend, this is all a joke. This is the biggest joke and the biggest deception that Satan has brought over the spiritual eyes of all the people across this world. That church, church, that in the church, that church, that denomination, that religion, friend, it's all 
a bunch of false worship, false teaching, false doctrine that the devil has instigated. He himself has conjured all of this up. It's his kingdoms. All of them church denominations and them religions are his kingdoms. They're not the Lord's. They're not Jesus Christ as his church. Amen. You have been misled. You've been deceived from your youth up. The traditions that you observe and the things that you have put in your heart and your mind to do are all wrong. Amen. You've been misled. You have a misconception of what church is. Church is being born into the body of Christ by one spirit and baptized by one spirit into that body which is the church. Hallelujah. And we are many members and we are quite a population, but still we're just one body. Amen. But you, under the law, under your Ten Commandments, are now brought under and are subject to 613 commandments. Now you are obligated to do seven feast days. Now you're obligated to do animal sacrifice. Now you're obligated to do wave offerings, heave offerings. You're obligated to give one-tenth of your salary. Not on the bottom, what you take home, but at the top where you grossed. And friend, I know every one of you, listen, you rob God according to the law of tithing. You're not bringing your best. You're not giving the crops that you grow one-tenth of it. You're not giving of the gardens that you grow one-tenth of it. You're not giving and uh, bringing forth one-tenth of what the law said to do. It wasn't just the money. It was everything that you touched and tasted and handled throughout the year. If, if you went out in your garden and pulled ten big tomatoes, the biggest, the finest, and the best one goes to the church. Amen. That's the way it should be. One-tenth. If you went out there and pulled a hundred ears of corn out of your garden and going to put it in your deep freeze, you owe the best ten ears. The best that no worms have got into. The birds ain't pecked on. You owe the ten best ears to the church. You understand where I'm coming from? No, I know your hireling preacher ain't telling you in depth what t tithing was. Tithing was never first of all money. It was of the crops and of the herds. All you farmers out there, if you've got a hundred cows in a year's time, you owe ten of the best cows, the ten of the best calves unto the church. You hear what I'm saying? I'm preaching to you reality, and I'm preaching to you the truth of what this book says. Amen. Now, if you choose to live under the law, why would you choose to rob God? If you live under the law, why would you bring the curse of death upon yourself? By cheating and robbing God. And by doing things on the Sabbath day that it was not legal and lawful to do. You couldn't cook. You couldn't kindle a fire. You couldn't go farther than a three, three quarters of a mile a Sabbath day's journey. What would you be obligated to do? Get in your automobile and drive to three quarters of a mile of your church building and either rent a motel or stay with a friend or sleep in your car. Understand that? You had to be within three quarters of a mile. Now I know all you people right now are shaking your heads. 
you're looking at one another in the room. Your your husbands are looking at your wives and shaking your head, and your wives are throwing up your shoulders at your husband. Like, what's he saying? What's he doing? I'm telling you the truth. If you want to live by the law, it will do no good to live by part of the law. Amen. Or some of the law that you choose or your church has clearly defined that you do. You are so misled because you have subjected yourself to a hireling who knows nothing about this book as far as true undefiled salvation. Most of you are living a perverted life. Yeah, pervert, perverted. It means out of the ordinary and clean out of the original. Amen. You are living a lie. You are doing things that this book says not to do according to the law. But no, you've been made feel comfortable and especially because you pay money. Go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 14. You had to give one-tenth of the flocks and the herds and the crops, anything that was growed, the fruits of apples and oranges and all that over here and over there it would have been figs and it would have been other types of fruits hanging on the trees and things of that nature. Anything that's growed in the ground, anything that comes off of the vine, anything that comes off of the tree, you owe one-tenth of it and not the wormy, not the mire, the ones that are shriveled up, not the ones uh, that the worms has got in or the sun has called to wrinkle. No, you owe the ten best, the prettiest, the firmest, the tastiest. You owe the best. If you choose to live by Moses' law, you have to do it in the form of being a complete, sold out, total law keeper. Amen. Part of it will get you nowhere. And now I'm going to break your old horse you're riding's back. Because you could keep the whole law and still not be pleasing to God in this dispensation. Amen. What are you saying? I'm telling you, the law has been, since Paul, out of context. The law was finished at the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ back into heaven. The law was out of date. It was spoiled. All the principalities of the law, all the rules all the regulations, all the requirements of the law were now outdated. They were no longer in effect. Can't you understand why Christ came? Christ came, born of a woman, made under the law to redeem them, Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, twelve sons, all of them that were under Moses' law. Christ came to finish, to complete, to fulfill, and to abolish the work and the deeds and the judgment of the law. Thank you, Jesus. Now you hear what I'm saying to you? I've got proof. I can prove every word I'm saying to you. I can prove your preacher wrong. I can prove your bishops and deacons and elders and your priest wrong. They are out of context of this book. They are not preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified the end of the law to them that believe. They are not preaching Apostle Paul's grace gospel. They're preaching a gospel that's mixed and mingled with the law. Amen. And it ain't going to hold together. You understand that? It's like trying to sew a piece of paper on a, top, a piece of leather and make you a coat out of it. 
the paper is going to tear. It's going to get wet. It's going to come off. And there you're holding a garment that's just full of holes and worthless and for nothing. The law cannot be mixed with grace. Amen. Either you choose to be saved by the grace of Jesus Christ through the works and the deeds of the Apostle Paul's teaching of grace gospel, or if you choose to keep Moses' law and mix and mingle those things in with your religion, you are confused. You are mixed up. You are undermining the truth. The truth is, Romans 10, verse 4, Jesus Christ was the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that can believe. Believe what? That Christ was the end of the law. Amen. That's all you got to believe. Jesus Christ did a miraculous work in his life for three and a half years. He had a ministry prophesied, spoke about, taught by the, by the prophets of old. These men of old spoke of a coming Savior, a coming Redeemer, a Redeemer, a person that is going to redeem everyone, not just Jews, but Gentiles. Well, that was unheard of. That couldn't be accepted by the Jews. They weren't about to allow us Gentiles to come in that temple that Herod built. Y'all have never even considered Spiritually, you people are babies. You're on milk. And some of you are ain't even on milk. You're on a pacifier. You understand what I'm saying? You're sucking, sucking, sucking. You ain't getting nothing out of it. You ain't even getting enough to sustain your baby childhood life. Some of you are on the milk because you are not able to bear or chew up and swallow strong meat. Amen. And I'm not talking about a piece of ham or a ribeye steak. I'm not talking about potatoes and carrots and stuff. I'm not talking about a stew or something. Your carnal mind is your worst enemy, and it's going to take you to hell if you don't snap out of it. Amen. You churchgoers, you're full of carnality. You have been brainwashed from your youth, from the time you were able to crawl, from the time you would stumble and walk and fall, and to the time that you would get up and go to kindergarten, and you would find your way through high school and some through colleges. Sure, but you've all been misled. Amen. Your religion, your denomination has took you in the wrong direction. Your pastors, your paid hirelings, your evangelists that got paid good money, but they ain't searched out the book, they ain't looked it up for themselves, therefore they can't pass it on to you that Jesus Christ was the end of the law, if you could believe it. They can't even pass John 3.16 on to you. You don't know what it means. You think it's... You think when it, you read the first little line of it, you think that that is the complete content of that scripture. You have been misled. Nobody's ever taught John 3.16 in the precept and in the convincing matter of what it is really written and stated to be. Read John 3.16 for yourself. All you want to do is intertwine your life, what you're addicted to, what you lust, what you covet after, materialism, that's it, right here it is, all materialism, all the cares of this life, all you want out is good times, good pleasures, and you want all of this extracted from the world, and then you have this, these little old things that your church implied to you. Well, if you'll pay your tithes, you'll be all right. Huh? If you'll come to church and join our church, 
put your name on our book and be baptized in water the way we administer baptism, you'll be saved. Really? You have been brainwashed. You have been lied to. You have been deceived your whole entire life. I don't care if you're 80 or 100 years old listening to me. If you don't belong to Jesus Christ, been born of the Spirit by one Spirit, been baptized into one body, and ain't in the true church, you're gonna go to hell. Amen. You're going to the place where unbelievers go. And hell is not the permanent place. Hell is not the... Listen, it just means a place in the heart of the earth. It's the place that the, in the graves and people that go and they are held there until the white throne judgment. When the white throne judgment is final and all of those that were in hell or the grave or that are dead are made alive given a new body and cast into the lake of fire which is eternal in torment friend there's no words that I could say that will portray and put any fear in you at all that what torment means when you're cast alive into the lake of fire I, I can't pull enough words and definitions of them out to voice it to you to get in your ears to make your soul scared of what is going to happen to you in the end. Listen, if you are living and doing in your life any of the law, you are spitting in the face of Jesus while he's hanging on the cross and the blood is running out of his side and his hands and his feet and off the sides of his head. Amen. You are spitting in his face when you desire to pay tithes when you desire to keep a Sabbath, when you desire to do the Lord's Supper, when you desire to not cut your hair and wear certain clothes, women, when you desire men to do certain things, listen to me. You're spitting in the face of Jesus. Amen. There is nothing that you can eat. There is nothing that you can drink. There are no clothes that you can wear. There is no amount of money that you can give that will make you have a place in God's eternity. Amen. You have been misled. You are misinformed. Who done it to you? Your church leaders. They're not a, an accomplished reader in this book here. They don't know what these words say. They don't know what Paul's gospel is implying. They don't know the regulations and the requirements to meet what Paul says is grace gospel. You know what? All the preachers, all the teachers in our churches, the mainstream religions of our churches that hold multiple thousands and thousands and ten thousands of people in the realm of their religion. They have them in their religion under the requirements that their religion is calling for. They have them in the place that they have them in bondage. They have them in a spiritual prison. Their minds, they're sick. You know why they're sick? They ain't had no spiritual food to eat. Not even milk. They have been on a pacifier.